Hi, welcome back to Black Poets Then and Now. My name is Kara Roseborough, and today I'm excited to talk about one of the most overlooked poets, literary critics, and scholars of the 20th century, James Emanuel. James Andrew Emanuel was born in 1921 in Alliance, Nebraska, the fifth of seven children. Growing up, his mother used to read the Bible, the Saturday Evening Post, work by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, the autobiography of Booker T. Washington, and more to Emmanuel and his siblings. Emmanuel knew he wanted to be a writer from a young age. He used to memorize famous poems and write his own poems, as well as mysteries and detective stories. An excellent student, Emmanuel graduated valedictorian of his high school. He went on to work various odd jobs throughout the Midwest before moving to Washington, D.C. at age 20 to join the World War II effort. There, he became the confidential secretary of General Benjamin Oliver Davis Sr., the first black general of the United States Army. In 1944, in order to receive financial aid for college, Emmanuel joined the Army and served in the South Pacific. He went on to study English at Howard University, receiving his bachelor's degree. He continued his English studies in graduate school, graduating from Northwestern University with a master's degree and Columbia University with his PhD. While working on his PhD, he taught at the City College of New York. He started teaching in 1957 and would continue teaching there until 1983. Emmanuel's earliest work appeared in the anthology Ebony Rhythm, along with various college publications. A decade later, his work started to appear in publications like New York Magazine, Negro Digest, Midwest Quarterly, and Freedom Ways. By 1964, he was giving public readings. Emmanuel was known for writing in very clear, simple language, with his goal always being to reach the widest audience possible. In 1966, Emmanuel's views became more militant, as did his work when he ran for the Mount Vernon New York School Board, addressing some racial political issues. He went as far as to stage a boycott of local merchants to drive home his point that the curriculum of the school board should be changed to include more about African Americans throughout history. His actions put a strain on his family, even putting a strain on his marriage. Today, he is considered one of the driving forces behind changing the English college curricula to include more African American literature. His work from this time appeared in two collections published close together. His first, being The Treehouse and Other Poems, published in 1968. The second was Panther Man. Prior to publishing his first book of poetry, The Treehouse and Other Poems, in 1968, Emmanuel published his groundbreaking study, Langston Hughes. This was one of the first scholarly books on Hughes. He published this in 1967. The following year, in 1968, Emmanuel also edited one of the first anthologies of black writers, Dark Symphony, Negro Literature in America. Some of his other notable collections include Black Man Abroad, Whole Grain Collected Poems 1958-1989, to and The Force and the Reckoning. Emmanuel is credited with creating a new form of poetry known as the Jazz Haiku in the 1990s. Emmanuel took jazz music and paired it with the traditional Japanese form of poetry. The haiku for him became infused with the musicality and sensibilities of jazz as well as subject matter pertaining to the black experience. He also expanded upon the traditional haiku by adding longer forms within it, each stanza following the 575 syllable structure of the traditional haiku. Emmanuel received many awards and accolades for his work as a poet, critic, and scholar, including the Sidney Bechet Award, the John Hay Whitney Award, and the Special Distinction Award from the Black American Literature Forum. Selections of his work have been placed with the Library of Congress, including correspondences with Gwendolyn Brooks, Ralph Ellison, and W.E.B. Du Bois, among others. In 1983, Emmanuel's son, his only son, James Jr., committed suicide. His son, years earlier, had been a victim of police brutality, something that stuck with him until the end of his life. Emmanuel rarely talked about his son's death, but did reflect on it in some poems, including 
Deadly James, for all the victims of police brutality. The following year in 1984, fed up with systemic racism in the United States, Emmanuel moved to Paris, where he taught at the University of Toulouse and the University of Grenoble until his death in 2013. Emmanuel left behind an incredible body of work, 13 books, over 300 poems, not to mention endless contributions to academia and work as a literary critic. I'm a jazz singer, she replied. He dug what she said. Bright jelly, smooth marmalade spread on warm brown bread. Jazz, from drowsy lips, orchids lift to honeybees floating on long sips. Jazz, quick finger pops, pancake on a griddle top of memories, stop. Jazz, mysterious as nutmeg, missing fingers, gold, less serious. Jazz, cool banister, don't need no stare. Ways to climb when the sax is there. All right, let's unpack. So right away with the title, we have a title that looks like it's from a line of dialogue in a book, but it's not. We're reading a poem. And so we, as the readers, are stepping into a story, into a narrative, into a conversation that we really don't know a whole lot about. But let's look at that first stanza. He dug what she said. Bright jelly, smooth marmalade spread on warm brown bread. Now, the way it's written, it makes it seem like that she's actually saying those things with the colon, but instead it's a metaphor. It's talking about uh, how what she said made this person feel, the sentiment behind it. And you have bright jelly, smooth marmalade, spread on warm brown bread. These are all really like hearty, warm, possibly homemade things. There's a, a hominess to jazz. Let's look at the second stanza. Jazz from drowsy lips, orchids lift to honeybees floating on long sips. So jazz is literally being extracted from nature, from an orchid. And orchids are a very feminine image, so giving it possibly a gender or a feminine type feeling. Um, and it's not just coming from an orchid from nature, it's coming from the drowsy lips of an orchid. So it's coming from nature at its quietest, at its sleepiest, at its most serene possibly evoking a sense of effortlessness. Let's look at the third stanza. Jazz, quick finger pops, cake on a griddle top of memories, stop. So finger pops, pancakes, sweet things, yes? And all that's being made on memories. So right here, we have a sense of nostalgia, yeah? Because you've got the griddle top of memories, so already thinking about the past, and then these sweet things are being made on it. So it's looking at the past fondly, to the fourth stanza. Jazz, mysterious as nutmeg, missing fingers, gold, less serious. This stanza itself is mysterious. It is hard to interpret because it feels like these are just random things. Nutmeg, missing fingers, gold, and then less serious. And he capitalizes less and less serious. It just gets you wondering and you're trying to figure it out more and more, trying to put the pieces together much like you would for actual jazz music. Last stanza. Jazz, cool banister, don't need no stare. Ways to climb when the sax is there. So jazz itself provides this thing to hold on to, this banister, but you don't need stairs. You don't need the support. The music provides the support. The instruments provide the support. The experience itself is what elevates you. And I think that's such a beautiful sentiment to end the poem on. Let's break down that haiku structure for just a second. Take the first stanza. He dug what she said. Bright jelly, smooth marmalade, spread on warm brown bread. So you've got that five, seven, five structure, and that's carried throughout the entire poem. So each stanza really kind of acts like its own haiku, but because it's all connected to the same narrative, we have one cohesive poem. Each one or each stanza is its own metaphor about jazz but all connected here. Umbrellaed under the title, which helps put everything into context. Thank you so much for tuning in to Black Poets Then and Now. Tune in next week for more poetry. Until then, stay safe and stay creative. Bye.